Hello and welcome back to Heroes End Gaming. I am Josh and today we were treated with Atomic Mass Games spoiling the new Jean Grey that's coming up in a new expansion. And today we're going to investigate her, analyze, and see where she fits in the Marvel Crisis Protocol meta. So the first thing we're going to do in this video is going to break down the Jean Grey card itself. Go over all the abilities, all of her superpowers, and then we're going to do a deep dive into her pros and cons just based off of her stats and her attacks and superpowers. And then we're going to try and see what affiliations really benefit from her being in there and her benefiting from the affiliations. So let's begin with breaking down Jean Grey's card. She has the alter ego of Jean Grey, not very alter ego-ish of her. She has a 6 stamina, a medium move, a 2 height, 5 threat cost, a 3 physical, 4 energy, and 5 mystic defense. The only difference on her healthy and injured side is that she has 7 stamina on her injured side. Her builder attack is Psionic Bolt, which is a range 4 strength 5 zero cost uh, attack. After this attack is resolved, gain power equal to the damage, and it also has a wild for sap, which is before damage is dealt. The target character loses one power for each wild rolled in the attack, and this character gains that amount of power. This is very similar to Modok's Psionic Blast. Actually, it's a word-for-word -word reprint, except Modok's Strength 6. Her next attack is Telekinetic Force, which is a range 3 attack. Strength 9 for a 6 power cost. It has the ability before damage is dealt if the target character is size 4 or less. This character may throw the character short away. It also has a wild proc of explosive before damage is dealt. Other enemy characters within range 2 of the target character suffer 1 damage. So this is great because it's a throw built into the attack as well as all of her effects triggering before damage is dealt. So she can throw the character and then cause an explosion, or she can cause an explosion and then throw a character. Uh, this is great because even if this attack KOs or dazes the character, you can still get that throw to do a little bit extra damage or displacement. Her first active superpower is Battlefield Manipulation, which is a 3 cost. Choose an interactive terrain feature of size 4 or less within range 3 and throw it medium. This superpower can only be used once per turn. This superpower is actually almost an exact reprint of Ebon Maw's Telekinetic Powerhouse, which of course is an active superpower of costing 3, uh, which is the exact same wording except he can throw it long instead of medium. Still a very good throw. Her next active superpower is Matter Transmutation, which is a 3 cost. Choose an another character with an activated token within range 2 and push it short. A character can be moved by this superpower only once per turn. So this is very similar to the Mind Gem effect of choosing an enemy character within 3 and advancing them short, but that specifically targets enemy characters. This can actually target friendly as well, but there's that stipulation of having that activated token. Her next superpower is a reactive superpower with the cost of 2. When this character or an allied character within range 4 of it would be advanced, placed, or pushed by an effect of a mystic attack or an enemy superpower, you may use the superpower. The allied character is not advanced, placed, or pushed. This is kind of like Psychic Shield Device, which is a tactic card that you can pay 1 to 5 power that affects a range within that character that allows the allied characters to roll additional defense dice versus mystic attacks, but also cannot be pushed or advanced by the effects of mystic attacks or enemy superpowers. Almost an exact reprint, but it's a passive built into her, so that's a huge advantage. Her next superpower is a passive, Latent Psychic Potential. During the power phase, this character gains one additional power, so she's basically an Asgardian, 
and she of course has flight. So what are the pros and cons of Jean Grey? We'll go through the pros first. She's a solid character, plenty of health, decent defense stats, is able to control her own team as well as the enemy team through her throws, telekinetic force, and matter transmutation. She has kind of a tactic card built into her kit with the shield mind and she seems like she would be able to generate enough power to activate some of her superpowers and her big attacks. While she does offer a lot of field control, she's not the most mobile character and that three physical defense is really rough when physical attacks are the most common attacks in the MCP game. She also has to spend six power in order to guaranteed manipulate an enemy character, which can be a little taxing. So ultimately, where does Jean Grey belong? What affiliations help her out the most and what and where does she help out other affiliations? Well, first off, let's look at the X-Men. She's the first mystic-based attack that the X-Men have natively. Storm's leadership ability is going to keep her alive a little bit longer using that cover. A little bit more ability with her other once-a-turn ability. But the interesting thing might be Cyclops' leadership ability. Maybe this was the missing piece for X-Men Blue Team. Jean needing the other team members to really discount that telekinetic force so she can proc it more consistently. Girlfriend to the rescue. You got that right, lady. Another affiliation we're sure to see Jean Grey in, and she'll probably be a part of, is the A-Force, which will definitely help her generate more power so she can get that telekinetic force attack off more consistently, and she'll have plenty of energy to activate all of her powers. Jean Grey would be more than happy to tag along in a Avenger team as she has plenty of superpowers to be discounted and with Shield Mine only costing one, it could really disrupt any kind of control list that your opponent might have. Jean Grey might want to bring out a little bit of the Phoenix when she joins the Cabal team so she can help generate some extra power and definitely between her builder being Psionic Bolt and the sap, we've seen it on MODOK, they can generate a lot of power. So this has been my hot take on Jean Grey. Tell me if you think I missed any points, if you see any obvious synergies with her and other affiliations that I missed, leave a comment down below. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you get the notification for my next video. Until next time, I've been Josh. Happy gaming.